This is it. We are finally in the Audi e-tron. So today I will test the range. Yeah. Standard procedure. I drive at 90 kilometers per hour. Yeah. It is to simulate a mix of highway driving and city driving. So this is pretty impressive. Let me show you. Now we are charging from a standard 50 kilowatt fast charger and look here. Yeah. I like this one. It shows you uh, uh, how many kilowatt you're charging at. You know, charging speed. And you see it's hovering between 48 kilowatt and it was uh, it was at 50 but the air conditioning is on so if we switch off the air conditioning all right and then see what happens then we should be getting uh, 49 or close to 50 hmm it was 50 for a little bit but this can only indicate one thing which is that uh, the voltage is well actually we are at 70% yeah I forgot about that hmm I have to test this on another charger later where we, where we see voltage and amps but I heard that the voltage on this pack is slightly higher than on the other cars so yeah so standard procedure we charge to 100% and then off we go all right we are on the move and um, I checked the GPS. I have to cruise at 95 kilometers per hour to be 90 on the, on the GPS. But the first thing we'll do now is to um, stop over here and check the weight of the car. Yeah, that's always interesting. We want to know the weight and uh, weight distribution. Okay, let's check front axle. Oh, focus. All right, one one thousand three hundred sixty. All right, and then whole car. There's some cars behind me. There's some trucks behind me. I have to hurry. People are getting impatient here. Wow, two seven twenty. All right, and rear axle is probably there. One three forty. All right, let's go. All right, I have the numbers now. All right, you see that the, the driving conditions today are not the best uh, compared to some of the other tests I had. So um, uh, dry road would be better for efficiency. So now we have uh, wet-ish road, damp road. It's uh, covered by salt. So um, yeah, we will have to see in the end, but um, the result here would be like slightly worse than on, on the drive day. It might be as high as 5% worse. We have been driving for uh, 36 minutes. By the way, there you see the head-up display. Yeah, it's really nice. And the consumption is freaking high, 27 watt hour per kilometer, uh, I mean 270, yeah, sorry for that. And now let's check here, so every time I come here, I also check distance. Yeah, 46 kilometers, that's right, it's supposed to be 46, so at least uh, that one is correct. Uh, but 270 watt hour per kilometer, but you see, we have wet roads, as I pointed out earlier, but also the temperature is minus 6 degrees Celsius, so that increases the... Well, like you see, it has the, the air outside now has lower density, and that means a higher drag. So if we try this run in, let's say, zero degrees Celsius, then it will be better for the drag. And also, <clears throat> the air conditioning doesn't have to work that hard to keep the cabin at 21 degrees Celsius. So you have to also consider that, you know, when you see this result. Yeah, we can't compare it directly with the other results unless we know all the, like, all the conditions on the other ones. Oh yeah, by the way, I, I'm using something that I guess most people don't know about. It's called blinker or turn signal. It's like a hidden feature in the in the Audi. You see, it's here, you have to tap it. You can tap it like gently, then it will blink a couple of times. Uh, or you can tap it harder and then it will blink longer. So what do you do is that you're supposed to use this when you change lane or when you at the intersection you want to turn is to tell people that you're going to turn or change lane yeah so um, you should try to figure out how to use it if you're an Audi driver all right uh, we are down to 75 percent and the only place I found a state of charge is here in the screen yeah but uh, 75 percent okay and then we have done uh, 85 kilometers so according to this estimation we should be able to do 340 kilometers that's like 210 miles roughly i think yeah but it's still too early because uh, usually when i do these tests to 
towards the end, especially below 25% is when stuff happens. So that's why we have to drive it down to almost zero. We are now down to 50%. Yeah, finally it took some time, but um, uh, trip meter was showing about 165 kilometers. Let me just tear a little bit, sorry for that. Yeah, we're showing 165, so that means we should be able to drive 330 kilometers. Hmm, you see, by the way, um, auto high beam is active now. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's still not dark enough, but uh, we'll see. And um, when it gets dark enough, it's like, what's the time now? Uh, 4.30, yeah. So in about an hour, it should be pretty dark out here. So yes, we are halfway now. We have been driving for about two and a half hours. Yeah, this one is a little bit uh, off because we uh, we stopped for that scale. But um, you know, I've been using that old the high beam, and uh, there have been several times when the trucks have been blinking at me. Yeah, so uh, it it has some uh, LED matrix, but it seems to not detect the trucks or maybe the buses. So I think I will switch it off. Yeah, there's a switch over here. You can switch it off. So now we just use low beam. Uh, but um, what, what, one really nice feature I like is this ambient light. You see here, it looks like a spaceship at night. Wow. <laughs> uh, and you know, all the, they have like small details. Okay, well there's some reflection here, but uh, not too big deal. They always have you know uh, small useful details like here. Uh, there's a bit, supposed to be some lights here. Oh, I can't see it right now, but uh, maybe, maybe I was wrong. Hmm. But look here, in the center console, it's like this. So it's like stuff here is illuminated at night. So that makes it way easier to find stuff. You can see I have like uh, a 12 volt, a 220 volt uh, converter. I have some cables and stuff and usually you wouldn't have that here you will have like a coffee cup or a mobile phone so this is really nice yeah it feels premium you know one of the few premium like um, EVs out there well you have Tesla you have iPace but this is also uh, one of them so uh, how much are we now at we are 20 percent 27% okay Getting close to the end now, so just a little bit more and then we are done. Okay, uh, I got the low battery warning at uh, 50 kilometers left. There was actually another warning at 100 kilometers. Now it says, please charge battery. Okay, 50 kilometers left. This thing turned red, but uh, yeah, we'll just push it more. So you see, we have driven 283 kilometers so far and we have. Well, 14%, so that's it's a little bit early to warn you with a big red uh, bar and everything, right? Yeah, we'll drive it down to, let's say, 5%. Yeah, I don't feel like running it down to zero. So, um, yeah, a little bit more, and then we are done. No, so, we are almost there. We have 4% uh, left, and uh, I see we have power limit now. So, you see the line that the... the the green line is slightly shorter, yeah, that indicates that we don't have uh, maximum uh, available power anymore. Yeah, but that doesn't matter because... Ah! Limited performance! Oh shit! You scared the shit out of me! Okay, I thought the car was gonna shut down, but alright. We are here. Let's go. <laughs> oh, oh! That uh, limit turned yellow now. You see? Oh, we have less power available. Alright, alright, okay. But we are almost there. Woo! Ooh, okay, so we are back here uh, at the fast charger and uh, let's look at the screenshot then, right? So we did 320 kilometers with uh, 11 kilometers left, so that would be 330 kilometers total. Um, and also remember that this is like harsh winter, you know, minus 5 degrees Celsius, wet road all the time. It was like slight snow also, so uh, I can assume that in summer it will be closer to 400 kilometers. And then, yeah, the consumption 253 is also somewhat high. I'm not sure why it is this high. I, my gut feeling says that the Tesla Model X would consume less. Yeah, driving at the same speed, the same conditions. I guess I have to retest that if I have the chance. 
but um, I also calculated that uh, the available energy. So we, we ended here with 2% left, right? So if we do the math, uh, the available energy is only 82.6 kilowatt hours. And this car supposedly has you know, 95 kilowatt hour total. So that means uh, like at least 12 kilowatt hour buffer. So uh, normally in, in a car like this, you can assume uh, almost um, about 10% uh, bricking protection, right? So that leaves another three-ish kilowatt hours on top and that kind of makes sense because we saw earlier that we were charging fairly fast even towards the end yeah so um all right there you have it the range test of the e-tron yeah so i hope you guys enjoy this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later